Yo, 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 what's up, people? What's going on? It's your boy Jason Guna back again with another live show here to discuss some football as we always do on the Jason Guna TV channel. First and foremost, I want to thank everybody that's watching this video live, replayed, delayed, it don't matter. Just drop a like on the video, subscribe to the content, share the channel around to some more people so they can learn about the channel. Um, currently, we are on 500 ad subscribers. I'm not really sure exactly. I haven't checked today, but just want to say thank you to everyone who has subscribed already. And I'm sure the more I bring the content, the more the subs will grow because, of course, it's an organic football channel. We discuss football all the time. Anything regarding the reggae boys, reggae girls, Jamaica, of course, we're gooners out here, so we love the EPL as well. And we just love football in general. So we're just here to break down football, have some score prediction fun, definitely break down all the news as it goes and relates to the JFF and the various programs that they are in charge of. So first and foremost, people, if you are watching this video, be sure to like the video, as I said before. And we are going to have a nice conversation for a few but I don't even know how long the show is going to be, people. We're just going to run it and see how it goes. But, of course, as you see in the title, we'll be discussing the JFF press conference that happened yesterday. Um, some big news as far as on the marketing front with their partnership with 876 Stream. So we're going to discuss that, people, and see, was that a good move? Are we happy? Are we unhappy? Um, you know, I think there is some credit to be given, and I think that there are some questions that need asking as well. So we're going to break that all down. Of course, it's the EPL this weekend that's back after some big games in Europe. So we're going to preview all the games this weekend, drop some score predictions. Of course, it is the FA Cup semi-final weekend, people. So tomorrow we have Man City versus Chelsea. Obviously, two heavyweights in the English game. Um, have a big, big matchup. Chelsea on some form right now. So... Man City, of course, had that tough, tough game in the week against Real Madrid. So we're going to see, people, what you guys are thinking and, <clears throat> you know, what you guys are thinking as far as predictions. Like we did last week, whoever is involved at the time, we're going to go ahead and drop down their, their predictions as well. And we're going to see who can take it home. Of course, you know, it was a tough week for me and all the people that voted. I think the best uh, record was four, four correct and six wrong. Um, but I did say from before the competition that I would give extra points for all the correct scores in any game. And Duklan Stennett on goal difference was the winner because he had two correct scores. And myself myself and um, Fresh God also had four and six record, but one correct score. So Duklan, big up yourself. You won the first round, but goal difference. We're still in it. So we're going to come back. Um, yeah, so we have, and of course, the other FA Cup semi final, we have Coventry versus Manchester United. So we have the championship side versus Manchester United, um, the winningest team in, in English history. And we're going to see if Ten Hag can get them back to another final. Um, of course, Coventry, we have the Reggae Boys contingent over there, Joey Latibo, there, Casey Palmer as well as hopefully potential reggae boy, Ellis Sims. Um, so, yeah, we will see how that plays out, people. But, of course, you see in the title as well, Casey Palmer suspension fair. He will be out of that game on Sunday, people. And when, um, when you really check out what the yellow cards were for, we have to really wonder, you know, obviously he has two yellow cards, but... Due to the circumstances, is it fair for him to be suspended for this game? So we're going to talk about that briefly at the end of the show as well. So first and foremost, people, I just want to go through the JFF press conference that just happened. Um, and of course, you know, basically the panel, um, of course, Simon Preston hosted it, uh, press officer for the Reggae Boys. And you had President re-elect Michael Ricketts, sec uh, Secretary Dennis Strong, um, then you had the two gentlemen from 876 Stream, I believe it was the CEO, and I want to say the marketing director, forgive me if I get that wrong. Um, and then also on the panel was John Wall, um, head of talent identification and senior men's assistant coach, formerly U20 coach. So um, basically bullet points that I jotted down from the press conference, um, one was definitely the start of the under-17 league 
and that's going to be the Premier League teams taking part in that. Um, Rickett said that Mr. Rickett said that that should start sometime in May, so in a few weeks from now, basically. And while this season won't be mandatory for the Premier League, it is recommended. Um, and at some point, they will make it a mandatory thing for all the teams in the Premier League. So for me, this is a great idea. Um, you know, I, I do wonder how much the teams knew about this before. Maybe Jam PL fan might know the answer to that. Um, yeah, let me bless up the people in the chat so far. Martin Baker, bless up, bro. Respect always there. Fresh God, big up, big up, big up. Yeah, man. So let them know. 586 seat there. Uh, 586 subs. So with a love, love for trying to get to the 600 tonight, people. Some kind of way um, from watching this video, people. Hit the subscribe button. You don't know. The content is definitely informative. And we're talking sense over here. So something that you can enjoy. And definitely, if, like I say, you're busy at the time, you just watch it back, people. It have watch back ability because we're talking sense. All right, cool. So Fresh God letting them know to like up the live. Yeah, Rasta backdrop. <clears throat> yeah, Fresh, my um, my daughter did make this banner for me. Dep on the dep on my page. Let me just make it the... We call it the not the overlay, make it the background for that for that stream here today. So, yeah, Rasta colors, you know. Mm -hmm. Bless up 433 Presser and everybody. Um, definitely, if you haven't already, um, you know, check out 433 Presser's content. Definitely another one putting out some good content out there. So, give my subscribe people view his content as well. Definitely recommend it. Jam PL fan, blessings, blessings, blessings. Where the gunners backdrop on jersey. Boy, I brent it. It look like my sellout, don't it? For real. I don't even, I don't even realize. When I said I have on my, my Zamaka shirt, I'm going to start up the stream. I should have changed my shirt to kind of look good as a gunner, don't. Jano Brent made me feel bad. I'll get my jersey now, star. I heard yesterday in the press conference, the marketing thing. So I'm just watching now to see how it goes. Yeah, Martin, that is true. That is true. So the first point we did have was that under 17 league. Again, I think it's a good idea. I believe the time frame that they're looking for makes sense because, you know, of course, schoolboy football will take over for a lot of these players at some point, you know, once the school year starts back up. So to have a competition in the summer months maybe makes sense. Now, one thing I do worry about is if the competition is going to be in the summer, um, that would cut into the preseason of some of the Manning Cup and the Costa Cup. So that's one thing that I think as they think it through, um, you know, I know they're trying to avoid potential conflicts with track and field because that season also happens and maybe some of the footballers might be running track as well. Um, but, you know, maybe they can figure out a better timeline because I do think it might come up to too close to that schoolboy season for some of the coaches in, in those competitions. So let me know what you think about that, guys, as far as the timeline for the competition. <laughs> Chelsea, a big side. <laughs> Big side United. You don't even believe that. You don't believe that right now. Bless up, Stefan. United. Up, 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 up. That U17 thing was being talked about for a while. It is speed, baby. But the clubs argued about it being mandatory. I guess they worked it out. Okay, so this is something that the leagues would have been privy to. Because that was the only thing that was surprising to me. I mean, right now, it's what? April 19. And he... He, he threw out a date of like May the 5th or even, you know, maybe the week after that. So that's not that long from when it's, you know, announced. So I was just kind of surprised by how soon they say it would start. But I understand the urgency due to the schoolboy season, you know, right around the corner once the summer is finished. Yeah, man, falling. Uh, Rasta, Rasta backdrop for you, you know? Initially set for April. Okay. Well, that to me, that would make more sense enough, Jampiel, because as I say, you want to start it, you know, early enough to get through the competition and not infringe on, you know, whatever they have going on with the schoolboy stuff. Because, you know, it's a run, run the thing. Dead Arsenal. I'm going to see who dead Sunday, you know. Because no matter one, and one thing for sure, whatever happened, if, if Arsenal lose, you're not going to hear City fan talk. You're not going to hear no Liverpool fan talk. But see the United fan them? Jeez, oh, geez. It's like to the man them bored and them season. I mean, nothing again. Them take set pangonas, brother. 
Yeah, man, them are the, the master troll them. When them not have no, them not have nothing to go on in their league. So them just a troll. Them are win the troll league. Mm. U17. Yeah, so that, that, that was the first point we did have from that. Um, the next thing when we did jot down from the from the press conference was obviously the the, the marketing the marketing um, partnership that was made with eight seven six. So <laughs> nah, but it it turn up right now, man, because I'm bored and I have nothing to do. Mm. See, uh, see, see a true, see a real United fan, yeah, coach desk. See a real United fan, yeah, coach's desk. Damn right. And as I said earlier about 433 Presser people, uh, coach's desk also have in platform track and field, football, sports talk, you know. And yeah, man, him debut, him debut for a little while in the streets, so him subs them up. But in case you don't know about theme thing, coach's desk TV. Check him out. You see it. Jigger. Move up. Thinking about it. I don't know. I'm not sure what that's at the end, Jam PL fan. All right. So, forget a little more information on this. More I'll look on what. The observer had to say about the partnership. Yes, people, remember to like and share and definitely subscribe if it's your first time here. Um, so, yeah, this was in the observer today. Robert Bailey reported. In an effort to ramp up support for its 2026 FIFA World Cup qualifying campaign. Hold on, let me see something. Yeah. <clears throat> campaign the Jamaica Football Federation has teamed up with marketing company 876 stream to inform future sponsors and supporters about its push for the tournament JFF president Michael Ricketts made the announcement during a press conference at the JFF headquarters in New Kingston on Thursday he described this agreement with 876 stream as a strategic move as they gear up for a busy campaign Rickett said, I think this is a step in the right direction because we want to replicate what happened in 1997. So we thought about it long and hard and we took the decision that marketing is very key to the success of this program. We engaged 876 Stream with hope that we will be able to get the word out and have the program branded and the end result hopefully will be our presence at 2026 World Cup. All right. Rickett says 876 Stream, which has been around for the past four years, has a significant social media following. All right, people, more I remember that. I want to discuss if that is a true statement. They have a significant social media following, right? So we're going we're to do, do some detective work and we're going to look upon what that social media following really look like, right? We looked into all of that because we wanted to partner with an entity that can impact the world, an entity that has a following on social media. We looked at a number of other possibilities and we thought that this is the way to go. And we are just hopeful that we will get some positive results. When I was reading this article, one of the questions that popped into my head was, um, who were the other candidates for this position? And is that something that we could get the answers to. So who were the other candidates up for this position? What were the, what did the other proposals look like? Right? All right. So moving on in the article, they also spoke to the chairman of 876 Stream, um, Conrad Matheson. Says that he's looking forward to establishing a successful partnership with the JFF and aiming to market the country's football programs and its platform, not only locally, but also overseas. After working with the JPL over the last two years, where we helped them to gain sponsorship and saw a lot of excitement with field stadiums, we realized that maybe if we can leverage the same skills and cap capabilities for the national team, so we just reach out to them and see if we can, le we can leverage, and so we ended up here in a good partnership. 
this is a major thing for us because what we will be doing is working through sponsorship for them, working through broadcast, working through marketing campaigns, both locally and overseas. So it is a massive endeavor. We have partners locally and some partners globally. So we want to use that network to kind of bring this forward and help the national program. And of course, it ends saying the reggae boys begin their qualifying campaign against the Dam Rep on June 6th at the National Stadium. So that was basically what the Observer had today had to say about, you know, the partnership. So what, what I want to know, people, I had a few questions, right? So their social media following being a vast one is something that was referenced in the article and also today um, big up i am sure sports speed was on there earlier i didn't really see a lot of it but i saw him you know mention echo the same sentiments about them having a vast following in the social media world um and i tried to ask him who the other candidates were but i didn't like i said i wasn't really paying much attention so he may have answered that i don't know but um that was my main question i would love to see the other proposals and who was in line for it um i did hear speed say as well that you know, the partnership right now works well for them because a lot of the initial investment is going to be done by 876 Stream. Um, and they, you know, they won't really have to see anything from the JFF until the JFF starts to see something from the root, the fruits of their work. So that's another question that I asked myself, people, was, was it that they were willing to take more of the upfront um, cost on them? That they were chosen because of course you know the jff doesn't really have cash or you know they say they don't have that much cash to use right now um so i i wonder if that was a part of the reason why they went with this partnership due to the fact that speed did make mention that they're gonna kind of do a lot of the early mm -hmm. Cranky, big up yourself, Cranky. I want to acquire your site because I need a slot, a time slot for mine. Okay, okay, okay. Well, Cranky, when you're ready, you know, but the, the way your thing I roll out, you know, it must be a, yo, you see Cranky for sure? Yeah, man, I, I'm expecting a lot because he's been, say he wants to make sure when he come, when he, when he forward out into the, into the world, it's, it's right, you know? So I'm looking forward to see what he's going to come with, you know, maybe. You know, he'll reinvent the space or something. This U17 was probably pushed back because of the national U18 team traveling. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Makes sense. A lot of those players would be playing for the respective clubs, I'm sure. Up and running. Big up yourself. Good game by Splatter. Goal and assist against Chelsea. Yes, I watched the match. I did watch the match. Um, Chelsea was just overrun in the first half. But they played a lot better in the second half, though. And Whisper did do his thing in the second half, for sure. But Splat definitely, you know, you you can tell that he's he's a veteran of this level. You know, he looked very, very composed in the midfield for Fulham. Yeah, it's um it's surprising, you know, because that role, you know, he he looks like a true potential CDM. I mean, yes, we saw him score a goal making a late run into the box, but you know, for the most part, he was sitting deep in the midfield and just controlling the tempo. So definitely looks like a player for that role that we've been screaming out for, you know. Bless up at Chile, you're there about. Yeah, man, you, you, you have four, four win as well. Duklan, I'm glad they are checking now, you know, because you missed everything we said earlier. Good. That's perfect. Just happy to say, JFF, I listen to the fans. Christ, to market the games better. Big up YouTube. You guys really making a change. Yeah, Martin Baker, that is one thing. I think when I was, when I was like, you know, weighing the pros and cons of everything with the partnership, one of the main things I was saying was, you know, at least they have identified that they do have an issue in this field, you know, and they've tried to rectify it. Now, of course, the questions need to be asked and we need to wait and see and see how it develops and everything to know if it's a true... You know, it's a good step in that they're trying, they, they recognize they need help there, right? But, but you know, my worry is, you know, where the resources that the JFF used in the best manner because, you know, is this can this company really do what, you know, we we need them to do as far as the JFF is concerned? Um, my, my thing is, you know, all I have to go by from what I have seen and paid attention to is their role in the JPL's marketing. And I can say 
that their presence has increased drastically when you look at, you know, three, four years ago to now, um, or, you know, pre-COVID, I guess you'd say, because I know COVID, you know, that was really tough during that whole time frame. But, you know, since um, Chris Williams has kind of gotten involved with the PFJL and everything, um, running the JPL, you know, I would say that the marketing has increased tremendously. Um, I myself have been more, you know, I'm more in tune with when the games are going to be. I know YouTube has helped with that as well. But I think in my, just me personally, without YouTube, um, you know, it, I do tend to see a lot from 876 stream as far as games and who has scored and who's a leading goal scorer in the league. And these little things are things that increase interest in the fans. Just being able to know those little tidbits about the players and, you know, you know, I know Justin Dunn was a leading scorer this year because of sites like 876 Stream. So, you know, I, I see where it can help. Um, my one worry is on the global side, I haven't seen their, um, you know, their reach go outside of Jamaica. You know, they, they have been marketing and branding Jamaican product. Um, so I'm, I'm curious to see what that global reach for them looks like. Um, but one thing I did want to do was just you know, do a little research on them, you know, because I obviously follow them, but I have never really thought to look at how many followers they have and all these things. And so let me... All right, yeah, so 876 stream are run. All right, so this is 876 stream, people, so... Um, let me come out of this. As you can see, they have quite a few posts, 5,439, but the, the key part here, 62.8K followers. So um, as a comparison, people, I was wondering earlier, how many followers does the JFF have on Instagram right now? So they have 155,000 followers, right? So I had a few questions earlier. Shout out to IMAX it Football. I called into his program this morning. And I asked the question of, you know, I know that currently 876 Stream puts their content on their own Instagram page, right? Seeing as how JFF has doubled the amount of followers as them, my question was, you know, will the content be, you know, placed on the JFF's main sites or will the 876 stream? Because even, even now, you know, they're doing stuff from the event today on their own social media, which I would expect them to. But, you know, are they going to be the ones taking over and putting on here? Because I think this is the only one that they posted from it that kind of overlaps. And the engagement on the JFF side is a lot higher. So, you know, is that a red flag for anyone that the, the, the company that they're marketing for, the actual entity itself, dwarfs them in, in followers? Is that something that means anything to anyone? I mean, I don't know. I don't know. Let me see if anybody has any thoughts on that in the chat. Good moves by the JFF. Let's see how they execute the projects. Yes, yes, yes. Agree, agree. There's a rewind button, you know. Yeah, man, my chat too much. I should I just bless you up and don't say nothing. My fault. Well, no, when we go match June 6, to see how the stadium stay. Let us see. Yeah, I think... Um, that's that's gonna be an issue for for this company, you know, because I do feel like a lot of people are gonna judge them uh, heavily on um, what? Who? This is what is this on my Instagram? I didn't know about this. Sire FC. Oh, he's going to play in that, the soccer tournament thing. Okay. What do you mean, Mops? Win the tournament and win a big money, yes? 
I'm sure you saying get transferred. I said, damn. All right. Big up yourself, Maps. But JFF have more following, so the president I talk about that. That, that, me I say Martin Baker, like, I know it's just one social media thing, me I look upon, you know, Instagram, which I would think is probably their most active thing that they do on social media. And the JFF have double what they have. So, you know, does that, what does that mean? Does that mean anything to anyone? That's some more I know. Does that mean anything to anyone? That the JFF have 155k and 876 have how much them they have? 62 point something. Uh that's a good question, you know. I think they do, you know, because I think I remember seeing content from them um during the World Cup. All right, so. Let me show you, people. This is them YouTube page. So it looks like them have 4.9K subs. And there's Simon. Yeah, another, another angle that I heard floating around today. I didn't even put this connection really together so much. Um, I don't believe that Simon is a part of 876 Stream, but he has certainly, you know, done work for them, as you can see here in this thumbnail. So, you know, was it that, um, you know, Simon, of course, would be someone that would provide a lot of the information to 876 Stream? Was it that the working relationship? You know, would probably be easy because of the familiarity and that kind of put it over the line. You know, that these are some of the things that I am just wondering um, because, yeah, that, you know, there, there's definitely a connection there. Yeah, JFF has more on YouTube for sure. I know, I know, I remember, well, the last time I looked, they had um, them, them chat, them. Japanese always a pop up, yeah. So them have sixteen point six. So again, people, that's a like that's like three times what they have on there. JFF have what sixteen point six k, and them have four point nine k. So yeah, I mean, you know, is is that significant to anyone? Is that something that is surprising to anyone? Would you would you want that ratio to be flipped the other way? Um, JFF have 16.6k. Yeah, I mean, look, when, when you when you look at when you look at what I'm looking at as far as the difference in reach between the two, you know, if 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 a company is coming in saying that they can expand your reach, you'd be hoping that they'd be bringing more eyes to the table. And as it stands, the JFF itself has more eyes on them than, you know, the company that we're bringing in. Um, but look, you never know. I, to, for me, the JFF, if they're at 16.6 now, would, would I think, you know, maybe operating at 5 to 10% of what they could in social media and, and all, you know, media aspects? Um, a dedicated marketing team, it should do wonders for them. You know, it should do wonders for them. Now, here's a good question from my cousin, Nick. Why is JFF paying a company who is marketing instead of using their own channels? And that was one of my questions from the partnership that I wrote down that I want answered is, you know, it's all well and good to, to, to partner with a marketing firm to, to help you with your marketing, right? But is that, are they really and truly going to grow your social media? Or are they just going to utilize their own channel to try to promote you? And you'll see you'll see the difference in the, in the amount of people that come to the games, or you'll see it in those ways. Because for me, 
if you're going to have a true marketing plan, it should include, you know, goals to hit a certain amount of subs by a certain amount of time, a certain amount of followers by a certain amount of time. You know, are those ty- are those the type of things that they'll be looking at and graded by? Or, you know, I, obviously I'm not in the JFF, so I won't know every single thing, but I hope that at some point, um, you know, someone who has the details of this deal sits down with, with the right sets of people and these questions can be asked and answered because, um, you know, we just want to be able to hold people accountable. Um, and, and the only way you can do that is if you know the facts. Uh, without that, you'll just be, you know, beating for, for no reason, you know, with, with nothing nothing tangible to beat them with, you know? Objective if no fans fill the stadium, then what? Yeah, Phil B, as I said earlier, you know, I think that's going to be a big issue for 876 Stream. I believe that people are going to judge them a lot more than probably they should be judged on, the, on how many people go to the game on the 6th. Um, but, you know, hopefully they understand that that's not really the only marker to show if they're doing anything, especially with it being, um, what, seven weeks away now. So um, I think I think where you'll see the big difference is probably just, you know, probably the, the true difference of what they do probably won't be seen until like next year sometime. Um, but I think the biggest contributor to, contributor to how many fans go to these games is how well Jamaica is playing and how much they're winning. So if we continue to have good results, um, if we have a good showing in the Copa America, um, get out the group preferably, then um, I think it should go a long way to seeing more fans in the stadium. But, you know, you never know. I mean, we had we had some, some decent runs in the Gold Cup and then for Nations League, it didn't look so good. So, you know, I don't know. I don't know. But then again, the last game that the fans saw before we got back to Nations League was the 3-0 that we got from Mexico. So you never know what fans thinking, you know? J- JFF should get someone like Usain Bolt to be ambassador to the reggae boys. He's following his astronomical. Yeah, I've always wondered why they don't utilize the star power of Jamaicans more. You know, Sean Paul, Shaggy, Usain Bolt, anybody that we have exported that is recognizable, we should have them in print ads with the jerseys. We should have them, you know, doing drops for the YouTube channel. You know, just, I feel like we have all this natural, and you saying Bolt not going to charge the JFF, neither is Shaggy, neither is Sean Paul. None of them would. So I just feel like they don't think outside the box enough. And it's not even that that's an outside the box thing. It's just <laughs> who is famous that will represent us and wants to see us win a match? Oh, how about the most famous athlete to ever run? You know, how about one of the one of the biggest collaborators in music for the last 20 years? You know, it's simple. Just do those simple things. Shall I like money to promote on my business page? <laughs> yes, sir. Then we can spread it out all around. Yeah, man. He was very, very good today. Very, very good. I would say he was one. Him on the number seven, I think it was. Yeah, the two of them were very excellent in the game. Also, the, the young Canadian youth was good too. Luke, Def- Def- however you say him last name, I have a French last name. He usually make the, the, the squads for Canada. Young youth. He played well too. I don't think it means much at this point. Ask yourself this. How many marketing firms do you know? They don't market themselves. They should have targets to reach. That's true. That's true. So Duklan is saying don't to watch the followers and thing. That's not really what they are. If they're a marketing firm, they're obviously doing jobs for other businesses. So they would be wanting to grow those businesses and not themselves. Okay, valid point. Valid point. Don't look too deep into the Lack of followers. Okay, cool. Boy, my prayer say on a friend thing, the sponsorship thing. Cause... Yeah, yeah. Look, I, I, I don't want to frame any argument in that way. I'm just being honest and just telling you that I did hear that sentiment going around at some point. But, um, yeah. Absolutely, DJ Khaled will do something, you know? Absolutely. JFF should put together a celebrity game at the stadium to raise money, make it a big thing, whole thing. Whole players versus celebrities are a mixed thing. Yeah, I remember, I do remember more events like that back when I was a kid in Jamaica because I used to, um, I used to sometimes be able to do the ball boy 
And I remember doing that for a, a, a celebrities entertainer's match at the stadium when I was like, I don't know, like nine or eight or ten, somewhere around this. So, yeah, I do remember that. And I feel like those games used to happen more frequently. Brother, may I tell you, and he's a Jamaican, and the man I perform a CL finals. I mean, now I say, we have to, we have to, because the JFF don't tell me already, you know, it's too difficult to have performances because of the time and this and that. All right, if you can't figure that out, just make the man do a drop before the match against Dam Rep and have it a play upon everything. Just put it out. The man will do it, brother. Just ask him. Me ask him. <laughs> All right, yeah, he did it to that. Where's him? Favor Ellie. <laughs> Look who Ellie son. My gosh. That's a good one. So, yeah, people. I guess. Um, so, it kind of split. Some people, you know, kind of worried about perhaps uh, respect for the subscription, chop chop. Some people, um, you know, not so worried about the fact that they only have, you know, a certain amount of followers and them things. So I understand that because as Duklan say, which is a valid point, if I'm a marketing firm, I'm not in the business of marketing myself. I am marketing for other companies. You know, that's that's my main objective. So, you know, don't who watch the followers I have, you know, but in growing other people brands, if you do it well, then you're going to grow your own. So I know I think I too thing or two about marketing. I can tell you a one artist doing a one thing will not move the needle much. No, I understand that, you know, Duklan, but I'm saying like mixed in with that, like we have all this capital that I don't think will cost us a dime. And I mean, you never know the reach of some of these artists. Like even if, even if it don't get a fan in the stadium, just to see Sean Paul or rock the jersey, while well, he might do, he might do. It might sell some more jersey. You know, it's, uh, millions of people look on them people they post. So I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if you're just thinking one dimensional when you say it wouldn't move the needle much, but you don't understand the reach. As a matter of fact, we're not for guess. Look on Sean Paul Instagram, brother. It's ridiculous. Dirty Paul. Two million. See there? Two million. Shaggy. How much him have? The real Shaggy. 1.1 million. But I don't know if the JFF would have uh, make their brother do nothing, but if they want to, between Vibes Cartel, Baga Channel them, Two million for now one year. Next one have one point five. So him him have whole heap between the whole of them. Man, the artist them full of follower, brother. Junior gang. One point five mil. And what my cousin said earlier, not think outside the box. Not a Jamaican, but love Jamaica. DJ Cali, thirty eight point eight million. Pin post, Bob Marley. When you love Jamaica, brother. Send him all some merch, brother. And tell him, say, a game week. The whole week, him go live. And I wear jersey and all them something. And I tell people, yo, if you're in Kingston, we the best. Go to the match. We the best. <laughs> there was DJ and halftime show with artists. Well, look, every time we bring this up, when whenever I've I've been on Reggae Boys coming commentary and Simon is doing a show and people talk about why we don't bring back halftime, why we don't bring back halftime, it always reference the logistics and the timing and when it's being broadcast by TV. And you know, it just seems like it's not possible anymore. Even though we have seen multiple times around the world entertainment at halftime of shows and it being broadcast. So yeah. I don't know if it's it's not impossible. Put it that way. 
That is true, Fresh. That is true because 60K is not bad at the end of the day. That's a lot of followers still. So that is, you make a good point. Like, am I grading too hard? Like, I may expect the man them to have 2 million followers. Like, why? So, yeah, 60K I mean, is way more than I have. I mean, I'm not trying to, I'm not growing a brand. I've just, I was just me before about uh, a couple of months ago. Now I have a brand. I would love to grow it more. Absolutely. But yeah, 60K is not terrible. That's for sure. Make profit last season. Are they making profit this season using same 876? Phil B, that's a good question. Maybe, maybe something that I could try to do is, um, Set up a set up a, some kind of talk, or even if it's off air, some kind of discussion with Christopher Williams on his um on his time working with them, and you know what he would have to say. I'm sure, obviously, they have a working relationship now, so I'm sure, I don't know if he'd want to have that conversation off the record, but um you know he would be somebody that would have first hand knowledge of the work they can do. Baby Shama Bala, we ain't wonder Bala. Yeah, man, not enough artists are Bala. Enough artists have all that. Typically, artists can kick ball a little bit. Typically. As the JPL people, when you see them, only them can. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's what I said, Phil B. Me, me, um, my, father, my father know uh, Chris Williams pretty well, so I don't think it's something that I couldn't line up. And him, actually, him know me too. He probably just don't remember me because I was a little youth, but he, he definitely knows who I am. I'm more asking if you think so. Um, if I had to guess, probably not. But that would just be a guess. And I'm not a very educated one either because I've never seen a budget for the JPL or anything like that. So I, I would just literally be guessing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's as I say. You made a good point, Fresh. Like, am I grading them like impossible? Like, why am I grading them so hard? I mean, they're just a company that um, I think it said what they're four years old. So in four years' time, fifteen k a year to get to sixty two. Now that's that's not terrible. That's not terrible work at all in terms of just growing growing your brand organically, as you said about this account. Um, yeah, the giant October 2017. So that's so yeah, seven years. That's not bad growth. About what eight, nine, basically nine k every year from 2017. That's not bad. <laughs> Where's the mall of them off the board, off the table? Why do clan you right to right it? They had, a, they had a team would have to win for the all of them come back or somebody. So them did tell me still, you know. Mm -hmm. Raymond is me. If him did win, the Marley come back. You can't assume that these people won't charge my boss. Remember, these popular individuals have a proper management team at least. So. Stefan, I understand that. Um, but I feel like that just stem from. I agree and I disagree with you, Stefan, in a way. Only reason is because I think I know, I know that, I know personally, like, some of the artists, them literally are, like, fans enough to wear, like, a social media post now, or cast the JFF nothing. But, man, that's more of a stand where I say still, times might have changed now, and everything does, them now. You know, maybe them, maybe they even even who them signed to don't allow them for the stuff unless it's under, you know, their people who sponsor them. You know, so maybe you're right. That's so maybe you're right. Maybe contractually them not not allowed to do it. That could be a thing. But as long as that not in play, me feel like them would have do it, Stefan. Honestly. Where was that song? Me don't remember that song there. <laughs> Where he said, I'm going to have a bill of size for him. He can't wear the jacket, man. Ah, that may I tell you. Just send him, send him some food. Man, you act still. For him, think that. Okay. So fresh, I make we know. 
Oh, what's against FIFA rule exactly? The the the, the concert thing, or like like halftime show and them something. <laughs> Phil be a joke. I don't. Concert that you should get one match is a sold out. Yeah, but more I know Marlon King. If Marlon King I say is a FIFA rule for don't run a concert, make you know Marlon King. Of course, the female fans, females in Jamaica, man, will be there, believe me. Yeah, man. Man, a bad man of Jamaica till a girl forward, you know. I'm turned clown after that. Adidas. No, they said, I'm not make the size we need. I will feel that we do it for free. So, Stefan, Stefan, I believe, like, Duklan. Well, the only reason why we don't want them to do it for free, Duklan, is because we're poor. And the ball of them don't complain. Them not get money. Them not get accommodation they need. And we not have money for paying an artist for them something. Eh? But we know say, some artists out there would just do it because them, you know, them, them, love, them love the country enough for us to do it. Same like how some of the ball of them just do it and know them not get their money. Same type of thing with the artists, them would do it. I say, oh, all of them would do it, you know. But try. So what if them say no? Call an next artist. That may I say to RR. I me, me feel like the whole of them would have done. I mean, yeah, them right. Some of them probably have got run them way and say, yo, if I can't get this X, this or something, then I don't do nothing. You know? And sometimes and sometime the, the man them just want a ticket for the game. Let's give them a damn ticket. For them and them and you know, couple of people and them want to bring. Phil B, Phil B, Phil B don't say the man can't fit in a jersey, you know. I want to send the man more food now. Some salad deficient. Why the nickname Reggae Boys without a reggae dance? I'll show the facts. Chris often stated that there isn't money in JPL, but it's growing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, the league the league is growing. I mean you can you can see the difference in even the quality of play. Definitely not where I need it to be. But I think a part of it is not even on the players, you know, man. They just need to find just figure out a way to maintain some good fields. Because the problem in Jamaica that I have had over the years, knowing Jamaican fields, like at any given time, you might have three, four good field, like actual decent field, but then because them three, four feel they get overworked, three years' time, two of them feel they mash up, two of them might have still okay, and then one more might have pop up somewhere. But then that cycle continues, so it's only ever like two to four good feel all over Jamaica. And once them two, four feel they get, get identified, them get done out because every competition have a play upon them. So we just need a, a we need like a, a influx of some new pitches. So we can try, you know, divvy up the usage and but maintenance is the key, man. We always uh, build things will look nice and they can never stay looking nice. It's a female and kids free. But I say free enough, you know. That's the only thing. Mm. Okay, okay. So not necessarily the league, but the club them. Okay, okay, okay. Average pay, um, okay. At halftime, show you that table. Okay, maybe figure say that still. Maybe just still want to clarify. I don't think there is an average pay. No, ah, okay, okay, okay. That's a big thing, you know, the overseas gambling thing, you know, yeah, man. <laughs> we say if everybody say no, then brother, some you know say JFF never use because yet them say out of all of them brother, none of them not in a relationship with nobody we can, you know. Like God, you have to do, you know, you just all I'll I'll try get get in touch with all Sharon Burke, you know, man. Cause she the whole of them have in, have relationship with she, you know. So you get you talk to she, man, and you just tell her, listen, man. Tell the artist them, you know. 
make solid agency a sponsor. Brother, do something, man. Just, just watch all of them show you and take the best idea of them and just try implement them, yeah, man. They should pay some of the dancer youths. That's a lot cheaper. Hmm. But who, all right, who, maybe me, I think too global because I really, Jamaica, we need the fans them for going. So, so who, who, who are the, who are the new youth them then? Who are going to get the fans them for forward? Let me know. Come I know I call some name and you tell me, say, a last year artist them there. Come I know the artist them changed all week to week at Jamaica, you know. Some of them would definitely do it. I know how chilly, man. Some of them would have do it, man. Shama do show to promo his album. Platform would be perfect. Same thing. Mm-hmm. Biggest crowd puller is dance and movement. No need to hire a marketing team. <laughs> it's a waste of money. Just roll out some dancer. Yeah, that's that's basically what um Marlon King was saying that Simon was saying, like it's a FIFA, it's a FIFA thing why the vibes can't be like one time a stadium again. Move away from this free thing and pay for quality. Fair enough, Stenet. Fair enough. I just feel like Manasa said we need for us to do everything for a free thing, but something like that could have be a free thing. Well, look at it from this angle. This level are glow, so I'm just looking at their brand. I don't think I have their brand. Yeah, that is true. But all right, but but Stefan right on the flip side to that, what about doing a drop for a reggae boy as much? Could have adversely affect any of them brother their brand. It's actually on brand for them because they are team, they are brand Jamaica, period. So it's literally like a branding campaign that fits in line with their overall brand already. The pre say, yeah, but me understand, me overstand the business part of it though, for real. Marlon King said, Is it possible to do a contract with a landscape and community main field and set a development program to improve the fields? Well, Marlon King, listen, I've said this before on these programs and I'll say it again. The best I ever seen a stadium look, um, right after I think it was right after we qualified for the World Cup, it was like late 90s early 2000s at the time of course i used i used to i, I used to play golf in jamaica as well right and at came golf course the guy who was the superintendent uh, i believe his name was mr dixon simon dixon he was hired by the jff at the time or not the jff but hired by independence park to maintain the pitch at the stadium and for from that stretch I guess it was like 99 till like for like the next five years or so, or even later than that, maybe even longer than that. He kind of um, trained the ground staff at Independence Park Limited at the stadium on how to treat the water, when to grab, when to water it, fertilizers to use, all the things that he would do when he was, you know, um, you know, set, getting his grass ready for the golf course. And that was the best I've ever seen the pitch. So for me, utilize the agronomist, agronomist from the golf club sector and let them train the people them that are going to take care of the pitch them. To me, those are the best looking grass in Jamaica that you can find, the golf course grass. So why not implement the same things that them do to make the grass grow like that in that same climate and put it to the fields. I think the main issue of Marlon King is the amount of water required for a field to stay fully like that in Jamaica. A lot of these facilities don't have that amount of water to be using. I think that's one of the main issues. Also, because the field them don't get enough water, no matter how much you roll it, if you're rolling a, 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 a tough pitch, it only going to be flat and tough, <laughs> right? which is not very easy to do. It have to have a little bit of give when you roll it so it can flatten. Some feel like the water, the biggest thing hold about the field, them, to be honest. No, I don't know where for free in this day and age, bro. Man, overstand still. 
was done. A man like that with that dream. Yeah, it might have to be. May I, may I aim for the star them, but through me, I beg the freeness. Maybe them not go really too pre that. That's what I said when Simon brought up, you know, not in the thing. I said, well, what about a pre match stadium is? You sell a thing, you sell a ticket, them, and you say, yo, free concert stadium is before the match. That also will make sure, say, people on time because Jamaican people love show up late to everything. So, yeah, you have a concert and you put some name on it and make the people them come and you make sure that concert they done all a hour before the match start. And you just tell the people them go in the stadium now, car big sound I play inside. And you know, just build up the atmosphere, man. Make when the man them are warm up, people are boo them. Yo, when 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 work or qualifiers are going on in a brother, if match I play, cause one thing most more is in a small is they say. Oh, I want to play the game in a sun at and them time the broadcast never matter. So the home team could have said, yo, one o'clock we have to you know, Migla at sun at the day, you know. And if I match a kick off one o'clock them time, I'm not lie to you. My father I go to the stadium from about 10.30. And we're there in our ends where we're going to sit down and the sound there from them time they play music and have build vibes and I tell you, say, yeah, we was one of the first people there. But you see, by, by about all 11, 45, 12 o'clock, the stadium half full. Already 12,000, 13, 14,000 people. You see, by about 15 minutes before kickoff, the stadium ram. So that simply means when the other team all are warm up, they might get booed, they might, they might feel the crowd already. Yo, them days are different, man. I wish people would never see that could have seen that. I feel the energy there. Come by, yo. Remember, if we get everyone who on the Rise Up Anthem back, brother, what it, what, yo, if, if them all forward and just perform the song there. When? When is that RR? Hopefully not anytime close to the match, you know. Like Chris Brown, one, you know. Let me know or, or when that is. Because party keep on it, champs and shot put through. Cheese and peas. Yeah, like that. Them need for like, what them could I do for the field events? Them can't put on like a. Them need, but them need for, them need the thing for hit the ground because that's how them know where the. Damn, nothing them can do. So I have some shot put hole in it. Serious overuse, yeah. That is a fact. Lack of artists at the matches is not what keeping the fans away, I can assure you. You should have a comparison box stretch already. This is what got them the contract in the first place. So, Duklan, you don't believe that the, the those times when the stadium used to full didn't have anything to do with the entertainment that used to be provided? Yes, Jason, I'm saying those things are in free move us. So while it's exposing my brand, you have to pay to utilize my brand. Understood, understood. No, and I like me not understand that, you know, maybe me just put too much stock in the pride and the national pride, something, you know. Come here, I said them thing they might all supersede them thing that because just like a man where I play professional football at England, no say him a forward come play for JFF and might have to deal with things that not the best for him career and but they still do it anyway. So it's a, it's a summary of pre Like it's a sacrifice thing. Like me'll do the sacrifice here. Yeah? Even though me don't give nobody else free things, me'll give this one thing free things because I'm my country. But maybe me does a thing too patriotic and then money and I got think that at all. They must say, yo, is this much for I charge this for every post? Maybe, maybe I saw it setting a stone for them. Me don't know. But like I'm saying, I know some of them people there personally. So me will just reach out to them and ask them, yo, you would you do something like that if, if there was no monetary compensation at all? And me tell you what them say. Come, we can definitely ask them. Football stadium. That would be nice to have an actual football stadium. This generation is different. Big up in you know, a Travis. 
from 98, bro. People in Jamaica have other issues than national team to full stadium. Fans like me and you who love football will go. So, Travis, is it that more fans who just love football back then? And just there are just less football fans in Jamaica now? Are that? Yeah. But me understand where you're saying, too, Stefan. Me understand where you're saying, too. Me definitely over. So, I have races, JPL final, and national trials are leading up to the match. Hmm. So the so the stadium are gonna be fully active before the game. Interest of the sport are free. What really bring out fans? Is it the interest of the sport? That is what I'm asking Travis from what he commented because him saying it's due to the fact that there's other issues for the Jamaican people now and the national team. But what me I say is Life wasn't no better, Rose, in the 97, brother. People did have them issues just the same. Crime was around just the same. And the, the place, the, the match, them did cock. And, and, it, and it wasn't, and it was because, well, all right, listen. You see if, all right, you see if, well, that simply mean, you know, because even back then, you know, Travis, when it was the first round against, you know, I don't know who it would have been. Um, French Guyana. And we have the first game. Them games they never used to ram back then, Travis. When the stadium start ram, like, may that say, the first really ram match was probably the Hex when we did host USA. That was like the first ram, ram, ram match when we can remember. And then from that point on, the match them just ram. All the home match them. Actually, no, that's not true. The first super, super ramp match was the final, semi-final game when we beat Mexico 1-Love when Pepe bought the ball in a goal. That was the first, like, completely ram, like, standing room, man, I'll sit down on the top part, like, the way of the place ram. 35,000 for sure. Or more. Yeah, man. So, if... It happened that Jamaica reached to, you know, say like the, the final group now and the first home match. If that not ram, then me don't know when it will ever ram then, to be honest. Limited entertainment in 98. You mean unlimited? Come me know me see every artist perform them days that being a man born to kill a cape, tan buju. Every artist, Ninja Man, Super Cat, any artist you can't, well, not Super Cat, they never did they, they, they them place at them time, but enough artists. Not just the stadium, the field, yes. But as, I, as bad as no, I know that for sure, yeah. Fresh and never they were on them time, them man. Yeah, man, people, people make the sacrifice for going them game they bought then, brother. Yeah, Mexico usually get the crowd. Fans nowadays love EPL, La Liga, Bundesliga, Italian League more than our national team. Jamaican fans are organist, bro. Well, look, when me did, when me was a youth, I grew up, you know, me used to love all of them league they too, but when Sunday afternoon forward and, and match a player, Drew's land, or Arnett, or Tivoli, me a big my father, take me at them game, you know, Harborview, Kansan Spring, any, any, anywhere the biggest match I play for the weekend, I did some more there. So, you know, as a youth in a Jamaica, I used to have time for the JPL, for sure. I used to go watch match. And at them match, they used to full of fans, too. Ramp JPL match ramp can't even get through 98 campaign never started the full stadium. Yeah, the, the first ram ram match was the last game against Mexico, brother. That match was the fullest me ever see it, and then from that point, it pretty much ram from then on. It's a shame so many said about the team, people don't give a damn. Yeah, bro. 
it rough. Yeah, I don't know what I'm talking about. It was unlimited. It was unlimited. And it became a thing. Like, it became like, you know, like, you know, your, your sister want to go because the artist is perform. Your, your mother want to go. Even though they don't love football like you and your father, them still want to go because they know, say, excitement. Um, artists them walk through the crowd and them a perform and the artists might come sit on side of you when the match a play and you know you never know them thing they, them thing they make people want forward you know man all not because that that is really how stadium ram around the world you know at a certain certain place everybody in there are big football fan you know sometimes all those people just want to go with people there you know and know say yeah maybe them not love football but them just want to there because vibes Jerry D, I pop the crowd. Yeah, man, Jerry D was a good vibes master. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man, um, Chaplin, Miller. Mm -hmm. No, I think I think the only thing is, I know, like one time, one time when Jamaica used to play, like. If if a man on the field the foolishness like they might have do a sound effect, the sound man might do a sound effect and the crowd make a reaction to it. I don't think they're allowed to do them thing there again. But that would have nice if they could have still do it still. Yeah, man, Jesus saves. At that, at that um at that what name that that at that Simo has put on the shirt, man. People them give my next ratings after him do that. Jesus saves. All right, people. So what are reasoning about the press conference? Of course, big talking points from that. The U17 um, league, which I think is a good initiative, definitely give the youth some more time to play in a league um, competitively. And with it being a JPL-centric thing, hopefully they're getting like some of the best coaching available to them um, during that competition as well. So that's a good move. And of course, the partnership with 876 Stream, I'm going to personally take a wait-and-see approach. Not going to judge them too harshly or softly right now. Just going to wait and see how it plays out. Um, but, you know, it seems like the guys have... Um, the one thing I do like is 876 Stream seem to have enough people to, to get the job done because I do see that they're extremely active in posting. So, you know, that's one thing that I, I will say has improved a lot recently with the JFF, but I still feel like they can do more. Um, so hopefully I, that, that we see that increase as this partnership grows with them. Um, so yeah, we're going to move on from that portion of the show, people. We're one hour in. So remember, again, if you have forgotten or haven't already, please like the video. Definitely helps with the algorithm. Of course, after the show is finished as well, we'll help it to keep getting pushed out there so people can know that we did a show if they didn't know no. Um, so let us do what is customary on the channel. When we're getting into the EPL, we're going to pull up the weekend's fixtures and just go over a few things. Of course, this weekend is going to be a little different on the show and in England because it is the FA Cup semifinals weekend. So what I thought I'd do, people, is not pay so much attention to the games in the midweek. Just do the pre-EPL games on the weekend and then also include the two FA Cup semi-finals that should give us a nice total of games to go through and make our predictions with. So um let's see fixtures. Okay, boom. All right, so these are the fixtures, people. Let me pull them up on screen. <laughs> well, Graham, I'm gonna put on them shirt, come qualify as boy. I, I don't. I feel like Grimmer don't quite buy into the fact say eh? um people might buy into it more if him come up with some kind of gimmick. But you know, him 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 kinda him kinda say a few things in the last press conference that made me believe like him kinda realizing what people like out of them coach because when him did pop that crack that joke about the money we will win and how the JFF are gonna need that money they hope hopefully now they can reach home. <laughs> like <laughs> To me, that that was that was something where 
I don't think he would have said when he first get the job, but he kind of realized, hey, boy, sometimes you have to just start the things here, man. Did Bailey's speech have an impact on the team performance in the match against Lille? Um, we are talking about the speech when him forward on and said, boy, we have enough time keeping ahead and them things. That's what I talk about. Or was there some other speech that I, I wasn't privy that happened? Because I did see when him come on, he was like, you know, encouraging and saying, we have enough time left. Don't panic and let's just play, play. Let's play with game. So, yeah, him did look, you know, look like him come out with a different energy for show the man. He say, yo, it's not done yet, man. I don't look so. Oh, it looks so. I have a whole time for score back a goal, man. I want to know. Need to pray before the games. Al Miller. Where is that? Man is my need for prayer before the games. I think Simon um have, have a theological background as well, you know. That's why I see him praying at the press conferences too. Definitely they can do more. Yeah, because if you don't have tickets, don't come to the stadium. <laughs> yeah, man, back then, that's a, that's a next thing to you see back then. All if you don't have tickets, you know, you're, you're go you go down there, you know, because you go down there and try to sell shirt or something. You know, them thing they used to be some mad event, man. And when the game done, you might not what that was the worst part because you can't take you forever to for leave that stadium there. Jeez, I'm please. If you don't, we say regular initials on it, just like a normal coach. Well, at that 876 stream at that that them task with you know. Forward with all the all the, the, the slogan them and the song them and the catchphrase them, you know. Well, me know say me know say Travis I go forward all the way from Westmoreland still, you know. But that's a Travis. So I always wonder if we'd have get more fans regularly if we did have a stadium a mobi if we put it. What do you think about that? I know, that, I know the Kingstone and them not gonna like that thought there, you know, but sometimes I feel like them would have forward to the game them more. That the Kingstone and them too busy, them have them life at do and them do other things. Much not important enough. Yeah, man, I tell you, man. People them at that at them time the people start selling anything. Anything. All yellow rug, green rug, black rug. Trust me. Yeah, um, I, you know, Duckland, I was I was contemplating putting that in the title tonight. The whole um, I think I'm going to do I'm going to do a separate episode at some point during the week, and I'm going to discuss what he had to say. Um, because I'm assuming this is about the turn a new leaf with Bailey thing, or 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 maybe not. Maybe turn a new leaf period with just how the JFF was treated before and all these things. We do have a stadium there. No, no, but is it functioning? Is it functioning? Remember the last time I'm telling you, we can't, them can't use it right now. Trillan Stadium to fix up. Duckland, which stadium you attack? You talk about the, the, the pastor will play the game against Trinidad. That, that, that need work, brother. If at that you attack. Are, are Jared Park still there? From from long time? Or that need work too? No nah, man, stop telling lie, man. You know, start no channel, man. It you starting a channel not going to be as fun as what you do now. Just go up on stream and just troll people. It's gonna be way more fun. But if you start a channel, we'll support you, Duckland, and come troll you. <laughs> yes, I'll be there. Let me know. I will be there, bro. All right, so yeah, that's that's what me know that it's not it's not functioning. But wait, I go play. All right, so I'm pull up the EPL weekend, people. And as I say, we have. Okay, a beer party, I keep at the stadium now. No more football events, no more cricket, nothing. Pfft. 
I have to say that to believe that, you know. Because yeah, you must go have somebody sitting in for host the channel. Because I don't know how you can do a, a show and you're not troll at some point, you know. You're not even being honest to yourself. All right, so this is the games for Saturday, people. Um, them save the best for last. You know, Arsenal not playing till after the City-Chelsea game. So, yeah, so the first game of the weekend, though, people, is going to be at 10 o'clock tomorrow, 9 o'clock in Jamaica, of course, and 4 o'clock in the UK. That is Luton versus Brentford. So, as you can see, people, this is an important game for Luton Town and for Brentford, of course. I'm sure they'd want to keep on getting those points and ease their way away from the relegation zone but as you can see right here Luton on 25 points Brentford on 32 and you know Luton is only one point from safety I think Nottingham Forest right now on 26 points if I'm not mistaken um, but this is the previous results of course they played earlier this season Brentford got the better of them 3-1 at home um, but this is what happened in the recent results for Luton they got a 5-1 we go ahead and put Duckland initials in the car. Him get a one goal difference win and a run off him out. So I will see what him do this week, you know. Luton and Brentford. So as you can see on the screen, people, the recent results of both teams. Um Luton, you know, not doing too badly. At least got a draw and a win in their last five. And had three tough games around that Arsenal, Tottenham, and Man City. Um, three of the top five teams in the league this season. And of course, you know, they got a beating from City. But for long parts of that game, they didn't play too badly. City just blitzed them with about 15 minutes in that second half and put the game away. And um, they had a really good game against Tottenham as well. And that 2-0 to Arsenal was a very hard for 2-0 to be totally honest. So Luton has been putting up a fight. People have to give them some credit. Um, many thought that they would just tail off and probably be closer to Sheffield and Burnley than they are right now. But they still have a fighting chance, people. Brentford, though, um, you know, a couple have, haven't lost in their last four, but only one of those was a victory. And they did have a bad loss to Burnley, who's also in the relegation zone before that. But they did have a 2 0 win against the bottom team in the league or the 20th place team. Why for the bottom thing? Um, Sheffield United. So, based on all of that, people, what would be your score prediction for Luton and Brentford? Of course, if we were to have a look at um, Brentford's team. You would know that our reggae boy Ethan Pinnock is back. He did come off of the bench last week and played injury time. And I would expect if all went well for him this week, he should be back in the starting lineup this week, I would think. But maybe they want to take it slow and not put too much strain on him. So that will be one to watch, people, if Ethan Pinnock will be starting tomorrow. Um, I do think that... There's a possibility that he does, but, um, you know, I wouldn't be totally surprised if he didn't start, honestly. But I'm hopeful that he gets a start. I would love to see him out there um, getting 90 minutes into his legs. But we shall have to wait and see about that. Um, Luton Town, you know, really should be commended for being able to even stay this close to safety with all the injuries, I mean, when you look at the back line that they've been using recently, you know, I think they're missing, you know, three of the players that would normally start Osho, Amari Bell, and uh, Mengi has kind of been in and out of the team as well with his own injuries. So, you know, kudos to them for being able to stick around. You know, they lost Adebayo for basically the season. Um, Tom Lockyer, you know, obviously went down earlier in the season. As I said earlier, Osho, Marvelous Nakamba is out. So they just have a lot of people out right now. So, um, you know, they're kind of going through it with their injuries. And Brentford actually, for the most part, getting some players back. Uh, Ivan Tony is pretty much back. Ethan Pinnock is back. You know, they're still uh, Brian and Boomer and Wissa are both fit. Um, so, yeah, they still have some long-term injuries, of course, one of which being Rico Henry. Um, very, very sad that he had to miss this entire season. But, um, you know, he's, hopefully he'll be back next season for sure. But um, for this one, people, 
I'm going to go with the Kenilworth Road factor. I honestly believe that this place has something special about it. And I just have a feeling like it's going to make a difference in this game again. With all the injuries, all the all the stuff going on with Luton, I'm still going to go with Luton, people. So I'm going to say that Luton wins this one 2-1. Two to one. Um, And I have a feeling like the coach is maybe not going to rush back Pinnock yet. So I think Luton will find two goals in this one. I think Brentford will score, though. Um, I was going to say 3-2 because I know Luton tend to have some mad games at their home. You know what? And further reflection, I think it's going to be 3-2. I think Brentford going to score goals, but I just think Luton finds a way. They get some set-piece goals. Carlton Morris get a goal. You know, like, they'll, they'll find a way. So I'm going to say 3-2 to Luton. So let's look in the chat and see if anybody is out here giving some predictions. Every time Travis got there, the people that are wanting to worry about Travis playing before Liverpool will be pressure. Uh, I would rather play before them, you know, to be honest. I mean, I like, I mean, I like for wait and then I have to know what I have to do. No, 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 I mean, I like that. Bless up, Eddie, everybody. Make sure to check out Eddie's channel as well. Drop in the content. Yeah, man. Give my subscription. Like up in video them. Owen Owen, bless up. One pillow gang leader, Owen Owen. Bless up yourself. All right, but now I read the comment. I shouldn't even click on it. All right, Duklan say I'm try to win again, you know. So Duklan say one all. Hot chili go with the opposite. So me say three two loot and him say three two Brentford. All right, hot chili. I go see. Fresh must be gone. I go put fresh down in a car. Fresh probably send me fee money. You know. So I go put fresh in there. I mean, I know where my cousin. Usually, me have a cousin. I represent for the family besides me, but I'm going to see them tonight. So they'll probably send me for them thing. All right, Owen, Owen. Yeah, man, come on, make sure I say Owen, Owen. We know I say Owen, Owen, not good for them thing. Yeah. I'm going to see who are the best, Owen, Owen. All right, so it's a 2 1 Brentford. So that this that is good. Nobody not doing me, though. So that simply means I'm going to take a lead. Yes, sir. All right, that's nice. I'll either take a lead or I'll be behind everyone. And Duklan, same difference. I'm going for a draw. All right, cool. So we can go to the next game, people. Next game on the docket, same time. It's what you call the relegation six-pointer, people. Sheffield and Burnley. So Burnley now four points, um, but they are five points from 18. So, I mean, it's pretty much win or definitely go home for Burnley at this point. Sheffield United, I think, is pretty much done, people. I don't think they can save themselves. They do have six games left to play, but with a nine, uh, with a ten-point gap from safety, I just don't think they're going to have enough games to make up that gap, especially, you know, knowing that they'll have to play other teams to get those points. Up. They won't just be given to them. So um, this game, uh, Sheffield and Burnley, this one is going to be at Bramall Lane. So what do you guys think about this one, people? You know, Burnley still having an outside chance, I would say. I mean, they need a miracle almost as well. But mathematically, they're not out of it, so they'll keep fighting. And, you know, they have been fighting lately. I mean, Burnley was a team that was conceding a lot of goals. They have only conceded three in their last three. But they've only, con only been able to pick up two points in those games because they're not scoring any goals either. They only scored two in their last three. They did get a good draw on the road to Chelsea, but Chelsea did dominate that game and Burnley scored two worldies in that one. I remember that. But they did have that good win against Brentford 2-1 uh, March 16th as well before the international break. So um, two teams that I think pretty much probably more than likely going to get relegated. So this one will be mainly about the bragging rights, but I think Burnley has a little bit more pressure on them 
to get the result because they still probably in their locker room would be thinking, boy, we still have a chance if we can just get, you know, three three wins out of the last five or something like that. Maybe we can get up there. But um, for this one, people, I think a game like this probably have draw written all over it, you know. Yeah, I'm, I'm going with a draw for this one, people. Sheffield United and Burnley, I know a draw doesn't help either team. But I think this one will end up being 1-1. One, one. This will be a 1-1 one, one game, people. That's what I see for this one. A one all draw. Let's see what the people am saying. Never wrong yet. Wow. Bless up yourself, namesake. But they are predict the weekend, you know? Hot chili say so one all two. Oh, you smart hot chili. Your brain at work tonight. All right. Duklan say so one nil. So everybody see low scoring like me, another you know one, yeah. Can tell when the people might get serious, you know. Owen Owen, you say you never wrong enough. So give me your give me your correct score, please. Mm hmm Duklan say so one love. All right. So let's have a look at the next game of the weekend. And that, of course, will be Saturday at 2.30. So this would have been after the FA Cup match. So we're going to order, you know. We'll go to the FA Cup match real quick, people. So the Man City Chelsea match. He want a lot of numbers. Oh, you know, and say two bug sides, so a nil all. Bless up yourself, Cygnus. Cygnus, if you want me to document your score, them, you have to give me the um, give me the Luton and Brentford match too. Because we did that match there already. So let me know. Luton and Brentford. Alright, so this are the this are what we have for the Man City Chelsea game, people. Obviously, it will be at Wembley, 12-15, 11-15 in Jamaica. Man City the favorites. Plus 400 for Chelsea, so you're getting a nice payout if you're going with Chelsea tomorrow. These are these are the possible lineups, people. Um, actually, I think Ortega might play because you know Pep usually give the second keeper the cup games, so I wouldn't be surprised if Ortega don't play. Um, I could see the back line. Potentially looking like that with Walker just coming back from injury. Does he does he play Rico Lewis over there? Um, does he play? I know Akanji's kind of not at a hundred percent right now, so he might rest him tomorrow. Um, I could see the rest of the back line looking like that though. I don't um does he give Sergio Gomez a chance at left back? Uh, I mean, I haven't really seen him, so I don't think so. Um, I think I think it's gonna be one of the strongest lineups that they can have. Because Chelsea is on a decent form right now. Um, I could see... I, I don't think that Mudrik will start, though, to be honest. He hasn't really been starting lately. So I don't know, I don't know if he will start this game. Madueke has gotten the shot the last few games. And I think the coach like how he's looking right now. Um, but you never know. You never know. I mean, Mudrik could start as well. But I think right now, you know... I'm curious to see what kind of headspace Man City is in. Um, I, I would think that they, after winning the the Champions League last year, I would think that they would definitely want to try to repeat in that in that field in that um, competition. And I just want to see if there is any adverse effects from losing. Um, but you know, City has been there, done that. Brentford win two one. Okay. 
Yeah, so I think I think um you know that's what I'm interested to see. Like will it have any adverse effect at all? I think obviously before last year we have seen where they drop out of the Champions League and they win the champ and they win the league anyway and they win the cup anyway. So you know, I haven't really seen it affect them so much before, but I wonder with them being the favorites and you know, like Roger was saying, feeling like maybe they were the better team and they should have won. Um, yeah, I don't, th- I don't really think Gomez will start either. To be honest, Chile, but me just that say, you know, I wonder what could have been different. But yeah, I don't think that is it. You know, maybe, maybe him try to keep the midfield fresher, and you know, him don't play De Bruyne from the start. You know, him, him give um. You know, and play Alvarez instead in, in one of them cam roles as well. Does he does he rest Haaland because he has to come off start Alvarez at striker? You know, does he does he rest Bernardo since he played 120 minutes? Uh, maybe ask a Bob get a run out. The cool start over Greece. You know, they, they have options. It's not like them do have options. Um Chelsea is let me see. This is who them set out for Chelsea. Okay, so the Sassy is doubtful. Colwell doubtful. But it would have good if them at least one of them two they could have forward back, you know. Even though Chalaba hasn't looked bad since him forward back from injury. Gusto been on farm for about a good two months now. Cucurella playing the best me ever seen play for Chelsea lately. So even Kai Sado been having a couple of good back to back games after being up and down for the most part for the season. So Chelsea look like they're peaking at the right time. But would you say that they have peaked enough to let you pick them to beat Man City in this game? That is the question. So Man City versus Chelsea. Well, people... I think this game is going to be a really good game. I like the way that Chelsea can hurt Man City. I think they have the type of counter that can cause issues. And they have the quality that can cause issues. Cole Palmer is on fire. I think it might be a Foden versus Palmer day. Who is the, the true... Next great one from out of England. I'm sure Jude will have something to say about that. But for me, people, boy, let's have a feeling like City does have to find a way to win the game and a star. I was a 3 2 City. Grudgingly. I love to see the upset, brother, but I just feel like Chelsea, I mean, City, I can find a way to win the damn game. One half for RR. But RR, you never, you never do the first one. No, we never see it. All right, Alvarez starts over Holland. One of KDB or Holland won't start. The two of them might not start. Alden said Chelsea 3 1. Jackson and Palmer will score. Eddie Guna says City 1 0. Why that would have shocking? Stennett said the other way. All right. So me said 3 2 City. Him said 3 2 Chelsea. Actually, I use him brain. Him said 3 2 City. I don't know which part-time body Duklan I use for them picks, you know. But actually, it looks like he's using brain. Signal said Chelsea upset this. Cole and Raheem. At least you know that Raheem goal would have must come forward late, you know, because I know mean, same forward from bench. Because I mean, must say, I don't mean, know what I'm doing to Pochettino, brother. The man can't get no start. Sometimes he can't get no game. Sad. Yo, why the blood show? 
All right, so that is that game, people. I think it's going to be a, re a great game, you know, to be honest, man, because Chelsea... Right now, they're going to play them best ball. I see them play for the season. <laughs> Chaja. At least you're honest and you tell us how you cheat. It's a only city. But actually, you have to play for score upon them, you know. And the way how the coach moves move is like the man that even want him to touch the field. When last Sterling start again? Been a little while, you know. All right, people. So we'll pull up back the EPL. We have one more game on Saturday in England, top division. And that will be Wolves at the Molyneux to host the mighty. I mean, I even know if we call them the wounded gunners. See? So... Wolves hosting Arsenal. Make a look upon the snapshot of the team. So, Arsenal now in second, 32 played, 71 points. Wolves in 11th, 32 played, 43 points. So, last two fixtures last season, we did beat them 5 0. I believe this was the last game of the season, I want to say, you know, 28th of May. And then, um, Arsenal beat Wolves earlier this season at the Emirates 2-1. This was actually a very tight game. We did, did find a way to get the three points there. These are the recent results. Of course, Arsenal with a big loss to Villa last week at home, the 2-0. Of course, Leon Bailey sinking us with his right foot. And then Ali Watkins further dropping us in the coffin to, to make it 2-0 at the end. Um, really lackluster display, I thought, from us, but give Villa credit. They had a game plan. They executed brilliantly, and they brought Bailey on at the right time when the space began to open up so he could create his havoc on the right side. So good game plan and good execution. So can't take that from them. Um, we had a good result against Brighton before that. At the Amex, we beat them 3-0. We beat Luton 2-0. Drew with Man City, um, playing the Real Madrid style that was so praised on Wednesday, but we got ridiculed for doing it. Double standards, I tell you. Arsenal 2-1 over Brentford before that. Wolves' recent results, they drew 2 all with Nottingham Forest. Lost to West Ham 2-1, drew with Burnley 1 all. Lost to Villa 2-0 and beat Fulham 2-1. So Wolves people only have one win in their last five, and that was the, the game furthest away out of those five. Um, and they have two draws and two losses in that same time. So, you know, they haven't really been getting the best run of form lately, but Wolves always a dangerous team. We have seen them play all the difficult teams in the league very well. Um, I believe they got a draw at Spurs. I want to say they drew with City as well. Um, I don't know if they have any draw with Liverpool, but I know they have gone places and and are not not gone places, but at home they have taken points from a lot of the top teams. So definitely won't be an easy fixture for Arsenal. I guess the only thing going on in our favor right now is you know lately they haven't really been getting the results that they wanted, but um, yeah, it's gonna be a very tough game. I don't see this game being easy for us. I think Mateus Cunha might be injured. But I know Huang is now back, so they will have a part of that attacking threat. Neto is out, of course, but Sarabia is there. Um, João Gomez should be available as well, who's been playing really well this season. Um, so Wolves do have something that can, can hurt us, definitely. Um, but I am hopeful, people, that we have learned our lessons from the past and we can have very short memories and go into this game knowing that at the end of the day, we still have the ability after this win to go right back to the top of the Premier League and we need to take advantage of that, people. So hopefully they can do that. I'm sure right now everyone is trolling in the chat. So let's check in um, to that. Before I look and get clouded in judgment by anything that I see over there, I am just going to put my scoreline down. I believe Arsenal is going to win this match 3-1. to one. Um, I do think that... For some reason, I feel like we're gonna get we're gonna concede first, and you're gonna hear 
the narrative and see all the posts and meltdown continues and typical Arsenal, blah, blah, blah. And then we're just going to blitz the hell out of them and win the game 3-1. So I hope I'm wrong. I'd rather just go up 3-0 and concede late or never concede. But due to the fact that I want to win this prediction, I'm going to be honest with myself and say I believe we're going to concede a goal. And I believe that's going to trigger everybody to freak out around the world. And then we're just going to win the game 3-1. And then everybody can just leave me alone for a day. And just say, oh, well, don't worry. Next week they will lose again or something, you know? Uh, let me see where I'm at. Let me see where I'm at here. Do, 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 do. So Eddie Guna says Arsenal to rebound and win 4-0. Eddie Guna. I would love for that to be the scoreline. That would be wonderful. Gunners have not been gunning for the last two games. No, we have we've been put putting right now. <laughs> Aldean says a pool fan wolves 4-0. Yeah, man, that's just a bad mind choice. No logic to it, just bad mind. But that's all right. You have a bad mind. You have a bad mind from time to time. Big up yourself, Damian. Blessings. You don't know you can send in your your pics via message if you like, but you can send in the ones that I'm doing now. We're doing the Wolves and the Arsenal game. Will but Arsenal should win this. At Chile say Arsenal 2-1. Alright, at Chile, I'll see if you're if you're correct. They did beat City 2-1. Oh, it was beating them 2-1. Yeah, that, I knew they either drew or won. I couldn't remember. <clears throat> Duklan said, unfortunately, Arsenal won them. All right. We say, if we concede first, no way. No, nah, man, we feel like that's going to happen, man. And then we're going to have to deal with the troll them for like a good 40 minutes. And then we're going to start scoring a goal on them, blow up. Signals said, 3 1 Arsenal win. We said, the same signals. All right, cool. So, Owen, Owen, Damien, as I say, you can just send me the list when you're ready before they kick off them. I mean, document them. Zane, I'm fresh, probably will Instagram message me too. Come on, I know a fresh, fresh gun. All right, so, soccer to start. Well, that's a good question, you know. I would not be like, all the way surprised if him don't start because to me the man look like him tired more than anything. They must say him off farm and everything. I'ma get that. Yeah, him off farm, yes. But I feel like it's a byproduct of him being tired. Cause him do have that burst for run past people, brother. When last say Saka beat somebody, just run past them. I mean I care what nobody saying. No. Saka is not like the most aesthetically pleasing dribbler, but he can dribble past people. Because I've seen him doing it for the past three years. But it's like he lose that burst. I don't know where it gone. Yeah, I, I, I'm not sure what the coach is going to do. You know. I think the fact that we have Chelsea in the week again, he can't even really pre that, you know. I'm just have to just try to win this game. And hopefully the man them recover. We never play extra time at least. But it was a tough game in Munich. But I think I think the problem is like it's like the man them when not really start, him not trust right now. Like um, you know, the Reese Nelsons of the world, the Thomas Parties of the world, Emil Smith Rowe, you know, them man there, while them fresh, I mean I feel like the coach really want to play them. Because him, him basically not really play them. So this now Secunia injured and the other thing I said Cunha injured. I understand the song, yeah. Damien said 4-1. I hope you're right, too. Yeah, I think Saka will start. Saka, Saka now start unless him foot broke. Him now bench unless him foot broke, I mean. Damn, Arsenal have some... Wolves is a serious underdog for winning that game, you know. And I think it's so wide, you know. Plus 900. Wow. All right. So after the Saturday game, then, people. So we have three Premier League games and a, and a FA Cup game. So 
we could forward into the Sunday now. First game of the morning is going to be 8.30. And that's going to be between Everton and Nottingham Forest. So this game has a lot of implications to the relegation area of the table. Um, let's see. Goodison Park. So as you can see, people, only one point separate these two teams. But Nottingham Forest has played one game more. So Everton will probably feel with this game at Goodison Park here, if they can get these three points, got four points ahead of them, and, and, and they have played the same amount of games, that means their goal difference would be slightly better as well if they win the game. So this is a serious, serious, serious matchup for both teams that can say a lot for how their season ends. Um, of course, based on what we see as far as the games played and the points, I think Nottingham Forest losing this game hurts them more than if Everton were to lose because at least Everton knows, okay, um, we're, we're only one point off of them. We're only two points off of them. Um, and we're still, as long as Luton doesn't win that game, they would still be out of the relegation zone. So, you know, I would think, though, with Everton being at home, they're probably looking at it at this game like this is one of my definite three points that I want to get to end off this season and feel yes we're safe um so these this is actually the battle of the deducted points people because these are the two teams that have had points deducted this season and it's just funny how close in points they are and they're the only two that have had those things happen to them so that's kind of funny but um two all Nottingham Forest and Everton two like two times ago last season and then in December, when they played for the first time, Everton got a good 1-0 win in London. So, you see the previous results for both teams. Of course, Chelsea does bag up Everton Monday. Um, Nottingham Forest and Wolves drew. Before that, Everton did have a 1-0 win over Burnley. Drew one all with Newcastle, lost to Bournemouth and lost to United. Forest lost to Spurs, beat Fulham. Drew with Palace and drew with Luton. So, if you look at Forest form lately, this might be one of their better stretches of the season. Looks like they had uh, one win, three draws, and a loss. So only one loss in five, accumulating six points. Not too bad for a team that only has twenty six on the year to get that in five games. And then you also have Everton's form lately, which. Obviously, nothing to write home about, but they do have a win and a draw mixed in with three losses. So, um, four points for Everton last five, six points for Forest in the last five. And this game will be a serious decider as to who's going to be a little bit safer going into these last few weeks. So, what do people think about this one? Everton hosting Nottingham Forest people. I think, honestly, even though Everton is the home team, I just think that Nottingham Forest currently carries so much more threat when it comes to the attack and for that reason people i just feel like they're gonna score more than the other team even though the other team is hosting the game so for me i'm gonna say it's gonna be a 2-1 victory to nottingham forest a part of me wants to say a draw but i just have a feeling like forest will find a bit more quality on the day and they'll get two goals and win the game two to one Saka needs some jerk chicken and porridge. I think Saka just needs something named rest. Gary O'Neill has confirmed I know they are unlikely to start. While Cunha, Pedro, Nelson Semedo, and are all ruled out. Wow. Well, that is wonderful. Cunha out. Pedro Neto out, which I figured. Semedo out as well. And Craig Dawson. Wow. And Aitnori and Chan unlikely to start. Well, that simply mean them two man they're going to start. Actually, it's a one all. Yeah, I was gonna go one all, but Duklan, first pick you make with your brain. Two one to Faris. All right, keep the scores coming for that one, people. Next game. We have the newly semi-final bound in the Conference League, Aston Villa, with our baller Leon Bailey. They will 
host Bournemouth on this day. And Aston Villa in fourth place, trying to solidify that fourth place spot, get further away from Spurs, who don't even have a game this week. So I think by the end of this, they would be, what, six points ahead of them if they can win this one. And they and they might be. Do they have two games? Are they one of the teams with two games? I don't think so. No. So Villa only play this one game. So yeah, Villa can basically get to. Uh, do, 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 do. Yeah, as I thought, if they win this game, they'll be six points clear. Yes. Um, you know, Spurs will have two games in hand, but, you know, those games are going to be tough fixtures for Spurs. So there's no guarantee that they'll be able to make up that six-point gap. But let's look at the recent form for both teams. Aston Villa, of course, with a big win at the Emirates last week, 2-0, drew 3-all, lost 4-1 to City, 2-0 Wolves, 1-all with West Ham, Bournemouth, 2-all with United, should have won the game, Luton, Good win for Luton, 2-1 over Bournemouth. Bournemouth beat Palace 1-0, beat Everton 2-1, and then they beat Luton 4-3 as well. So Bournemouth, one of those teams, if they could play every single game for 38 games at home, they might very well make the Champions League. But you do have to travel in this competition, and on those travels, they have not been the same team. So for me, um, I do think that the, the expenditure of energy on Thursday will have an effect on Villa, but I still think that they'll have enough in the tank to get this result. Um, I think that fourth position, they see it wide open for the taking with Spurs fixtures coming up, with them being able to extend the gap from them. Um, but we have seen, you know, as evidenced by the three all with Brentford, um, you know, they they... They have a tendency to maybe not put teams away when they could. And Bournemouth has the potential to be do something similar to them in this game. But I do think that in the end, this Villa team will figure out a way to get these three points this time around. And I'm going to say that this game is going to end uh, three to two. I think Bournemouth will put up a very good fight. But I do think that Villa gets the win three to two in this one. The usual suspects, Bailey with assist or goal or both, and Watkins as well to get on the score sheet again and try to get closer to Haaland and Cole Palmer in the Golden Boot race. So that's my prediction for this one. 3 2 to the villains to give them a six point gap over Spurs for that fourth spot. Signal say one all. And that would have been Everton and Forest. And this is Villa. And uh, what am name again? Bournemouth. All right. So Cygnus did say one all for the last game. <laughs> Stop being nice. Damien said 3 1 Forest. I'm going to get back up. Had Chile said 3 1 Villa. I was going to say one, you know, but I have a feeling like I'm going to let you know more than one that time. Yeah. Desmond, Desmond, Signal said Desmond. Duclan Stenet said 3 1. Who? 3 1 Spurs. Are you reach a Spurs? Stenet, not to understand how this thing works, you know. With Spurs dropping. I must feel like I mean to say. Scratch that. No, man. May I write 3-1 Spurs? That's a definite loss because I'm not even a play. <laughs> Villa Bournemouth. Let me know. Let me know. Let me know. All right. 2-1 Villa. So, Duclan all that invent game when I play for try win. It's a history. But don't tell, decide not even a play. No, no, man. I give me a score for them. You know? All right. Crystal Palace versus West Ham. So, Mikel Antonio. Forwarding off a good performance against Leverkusen with a goal. And the man did it. The ref, them are way after the game. But did you see the interview with the man give, man? My gosh. 
<laughs> Man say a 14 them a play against, you know. All right, so, <clears throat> excuse me. West Ham, 48 points, 33 played, 5 left. Palace, 32, 33 points. They're pretty much safe. Can't really get to Europe. So, um, basically, I think this new manager will just be trying to implement his system even more on the players he has. I think for a few of them, they're maybe working a little harder because they know the coach will probably be giving all these players a trial period to see if he wants to build a team around them or keep them or what the case is. So, I do think that this manager is going to get the best out of this team eventually. You can see that they're playing a lot better, a much better style of play to watch. He has unlocked the best of Mateta, who is looking like a real threat up front. And of course, Olise and Eze are now back fit. So, you know, I think they're at, you know, as full strength as they can possibly be, at least from an attacking point of view. And the coach has implemented the back three system, which I think has lessened the blow of some of the injuries around the back as well. So I think he's doing the best with what he has. Um, but West Ham right now, people can just focus on the league. They're out of the European competitions. And, um, you know, they let me look at the table overall, actually. Um, just curious to see how close they would be to any kind of European glories. Now, we pretty much know now, people, that the fifth is definitely going to be a Europa League spot, which makes the sixth place position um, pretty much the only way that you would get into the Conference League. So, um, yeah, right now, West Ham has played one more game than their closest rivals above them. But if they can get this win and go to 51, you never know. You never know what, what will happen with these two teams. They... You know, they have been dropping points left, right, and center throughout the season. So, West Ham still with something to play for. I'm sure they think that if they could go on a decent run in their last five, they should be able to get that six spot. And I'm sure they'll be going for it. You know, why not go for the highest position possible, especially knowing that you don't have any other games to play anywhere else because you're out of every competition. So, um, Damian said 3-1 Villa. Write that down. All right, cool. So let's see now. Let's see. Let's see. So that's that, people. Let me go back to the fixtures one more time now. So, yeah, give me your predictions, people. Crystal Palace versus West Ham. So Bowen is back. Antonio. All right, so Crystal Palace, West Ham. All right, so I'm going to tell you. Crystal Palace, West Ham, London Stadium. No, but this I play. Who well, was the game? Crucial component. So it's actually at Palace Brown. Changes things a bit, you know. Changes things just a bit. All right. I go Desmond 2 2. You know. Yeah, man, Desmond. I mean, I go West Ham win, but I say Desmond. Desmond, I say. Signal say 2 1 West Ham. All right. West Ham 3 1. I hate Palace. At Chile said 2 all. Duclan said 2 all. It's a very. That was a very popular score for this one. Signal said 2 1. I'm right at already. Wow. Damien said 2 all. Draw 2. A war going on here, so. So Cygnus, you can you can get a win there, so 
If you get that right, because everybody I go with it, Desmond Deso. One Desmond 2-2. Two, two. All right, and the final match on Sunday that we're going to do is the Fulham versus Liverpool match. So, people, we have two stunted was in the Premier League title race. And they go by the names of Arsenal and Liverpool. So, the other stunted was is Liverpool, third place behind Arsenal and goal difference, same point, 71. And they play Fulham, 42 points, 33 played. So, for this one, people, this game will be at Craven Cottage. And as you can see, Fulham has been a bit up and down the last five. Liverpool drawn a loss in their last two. And two wins and also a draw against City. So, two draws, two wins and a loss in the last five. Probably, if you look back at Liverpool's season, that's probably one of the worst five game stretches for them. Um, did beat Atalanta in the second leg in Italy, but could not turn around the 3-0, so they're out of Europe as well, just like Arsenal. So, you know, we need to see how that's going to affect them. Um, on the injury front, I don't think that there's anything major to report. I just want to do one last check before I say that for certain. Yeah, Fulham is pretty much fit. So Connor Bradley's out. But other than that, they are back. Trent should be back. Obviously, Robbo is back. Um, all the midfielders are fit. All the forwards are fit. So, you know, we'll see. Oh, he decides to line up. Does he start Nunes? Does he start Jota this game? Is he back fully fit to start? You know, I, I would think Diaz and Salah pretty much will definitely play from the start. But that centre forward role will be up for debate. And also that midfield role. Does Jones come in? Does Saba Sly start? I think Alexis is pretty much probably the only one that I think definitely will start. Um, and I think Endo probably starts for sure as well in that in that pivot role. Um, and in the back line, we'll have some questions as well. Is it Konate and Van Dijk? Do we see Kansa again? Haven't seen him for a while. Um, you know, Allison was back. I think he played in the European game. Is he back in the Premier League this week? So, I mean, obviously, if Allison is fit, I would think he plays. But, you know, you never know. You never know. So, yeah, Fulham versus Liverpool. Does Liverpool bounce back, people? Or... Does this does the uh does the fall off continue for Liverpool as well? Uh me personally, people, I think Fulham will be a tough, tough team for them at home. They don't concede a lot of goals. Uh Liverpool has been struggling to convert their chances that they have created lately. And um I don't believe that Fulham is gonna give up as many chances as some other teams have been conceding to them. So that lends me to think that Liverpool's going to have a struggle to score a lot of goals in this game. Um, hmm. You know, people, I think I think this is just bad timing for Liverpool to face this team right now. I think Fulham is pretty confident. Um, and I think they'll smell blood. I don't think they'll get the three points, people. But I'm going to say this one is going to be a one all. A 1-1 one, one draw. I think Liverpool, again, misses chances. I think Bern Leno has a really top performance. And they end up drawing this match one all, people. That's what I'm going for for this one. Cygnus Media looks like he agrees with me. And Fresh God has arrived to give me his scores. So I see Everton, Nottingham, Faris. 1-1. One, one. Villa 2-0. Damien said Liverpool 3 1. All right. First, West Ham 2 1. You are Cygnus. Stenet said 3 love Liverpool. Wow. First, Fulham 3 1. Humble. 
Yo, start back Bobby coach. A long time you know give the ball a start, you know. Give him a start that time, yeah, man. I stop going like a idiot. Cho. Piss me off. Fresh said Burnley two love. What a game today. I mean, no, say fresh should I say Arsenal are dry, you know, or lose, you know. At least you know, say them are lose. Fulham Liverpool 1 2. Okay, so 2 1 Liverpool. Bless up 1 Dan Sherman. Chelsea 3 2. Everybody think it's gonna be three two. And Luton Brentford, that are the one minute. Hard to beat Fulham at home, but Liverpool two one. Yeah. May I, may I pre the home farm for real, you know. Two one Brentford. Alright, fresh, me get the whole of them. Respect. That is true, hot chili. That's why I'm hope the man get a game tomorrow. Because him, him like the big team them. <laughs> Wait, so you say it first. But you can't, you can't, you can't um, oh, okay, because you say it first out of everybody in the line. They say, okay, I true, I true, I true. Because I'm going to look on the comments in me and pre my score. I'm going to want to know. Because all I'm going to do is mess me up, brother. I'm going to have some good one. That would be very nice. Bobby Stitcher, a trick. The coach need for no same have to dip on the field for score the hat trick though. That's the problem. Damien does send on the other score them now. Luton, Brentford, Sheffield, Burnley, and Man City, Chelsea. And them have the whole of yours. Mm -hmm. And then one more game we got the people for the weekend. And of course, that is going to be Coventry versus United. So let's switch from that and go to my other screen where I have the FA Cup match ready to go. England. So why them now show me the other game them? Okay, see it now. Coventry, Galchester. Oh, that Mahishan, brother. <clears throat> Big up yourself, you know, Kevin. We're out and about, bro. You don't know I'm starting a channel and thing. So if you're not subscribed already, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss no content. All right, bro? Big up yourself. But not a hat trick, yeah. 3 1 man, you will never bet against my team, no matter how poor they are doing. Ah, fresh. You are real fans. Might be deluded, but you are real fans. So 3-1 United, him say. Lati body here to pack it, Garnacho. Yeah, man, a simple thing, that, man. Ah, respect, Kevin, respect. Man, you 2 nil Coventry. Cygnus Media say 2 nil. Uh, we could see. So yeah, people, the last thing we never talk about, and since we are talking about that game, I last before we sign off tonight. Obviously, you see the predicted lineup for Coventry here. Um, and you probably see a glaring omission from the screen. Well, I see two of them actually, because them now start Latibo there or Casey Palmer in this predicted lineup, which I think if you have been watching Coventry lately, I don't see a way where um Lati Bodero start, whether it's in a back three or playing right back or even playing this middle role in the in the midfield. I mean, I've seen him play somewhere. But really the one that's missing as well, Casey Palmer has been playing where it's a Calamo here, there. But he will not be available due to yellow card suspension. But what I wanted to do, people, was to show you 
the games which this happened in and why they happened. So if you look, Casey Palmer's season, if you go to his matches and the results, you see the last time they played the FA Cup was when they beat Wolves. Now in this game, obviously it was a madness. They were down 2-1 in the 88th minute. They equalized in the 90 plus 7 and then scored the winner 10 minutes into injury time. Now if you look here at this, Casey Palmer got unallowed field entering. You know when he got that card? Literally, when Haji Wright goal go in. The man run. So happy. The man run upon the field. And I am not certain that he was the only man who run upon the field. But somehow, him get a yellow card after everything done. Now, that yellow card at the time didn't mean much to me. But the problem was, in the FA Cup, two yellow cards is a suspension. And obviously, he played in the game against Maidstone and had two assists for the 5-0. But the game prior to that, they beat Sheffield Wednesday. But the game prior to that, the first time they played Sheffield Wednesday before the replay, what is this? Another yellow card. But if you remember, people, this was the game. This yellow card, I want to say it was for a foul. Okay. But didn't he get another yellow card for like... Let me see. He would have had a game where he like scored a goal and got a yellow. I thought that one of these yellows, I read an article, I read an article saying boy, not an article, I saw a Twitter post talking about the fact that Casey Palmer was suspended. And they were asking if it was fair because one of the, the yellow cards he received was him um protesting against racism and of course he you know exposed his shirt or whatever and it's an automatic yellow but you know with discretion and everything like why i don't understand is that seriously grounds for a yellow card like if you know said the man get racially abused and the man have a message about racism on him shirt like is that really like in the in the spirit of the game to give him a yellow card like i Am I I don't know. Am I am I am I asking for too much from the referee there? So what do you answer now? Brentford loot and 3 1. Okay, so 3 1 Brentford. Uh Sheffield Burnley 3 2. Okay, Sheffield I gotta beat them. And then you have Man City Chelsea 3 2 as well. Alright, so I have everything up to the manual game now. Yeah, so I don't know if it's fair, people, but Casey Palmer has been robbed of a trip to or a, well he can go, but he can't play in the game at Wembley, which is very, very sad for me personally. But I love to see him against the Manchester United opposition and everything. But sadly, he will have to depend on his team to be able to get the job done. So This let's go back to the game though, people. But yeah, I don't know. I mean, the whole Casey Palmer thing. It look, it's say it's saying the yellow card is for a foul, but I could have swore that they were saying one of these yellows that he has was due to him protesting the racism that time, which I thought was unfair. But it's saying it was a foul, people. So but let's go by what these things say. But this is a put. Projected our possible lineups for tomorrow. Um, I don't believe that man you have players back, so I think Evans doubtful, Montana McTominay doubtful, all them man you're out, 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 out. So I guess Evans and McTominay are the only ones that have a chance. 
Um, so it probably will look a lot like what their last, you know, league game looked like. You know, Mason Mount been coming off the bench lately. Does can he get a game in this game? Maybe I don't know. Um, but yeah, we'll see people. I I think that um while I want to say that Coventry will cause the upset, I think the, the Palmer absence is gonna hurt them. Um, I do think that they, they get a lot more out of the attackers when he's in there. I think O'Hare is a good player, but I think that some of the things that Palmer does, O'Hare does, doesn't really do them quite the same. Um, Haji Wright and Ellis Sims will pose a big threat to, to the United back line, though. So that's why, that's why I give them a punch as chance in this one. Um, I could see this one going to extra time, possibly. But I think in the end, Dutty United pull it out, you know, to be honest, man. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say three two to United in extra time. Yeah. Three two will be the final score though. So let me see what everybody else think. I think Duckland definitely going. Well, uh, okay, well we wouldn't have seen it in this game, but I, I get what you mean. Man, you are your team, Cygnus. So you go with the two love. Man, you three one day, man. Say. All right. He said three one Liverpool too. If I'm mad start, then I'm have a next guest coming. <laughs> Wait, say no matter who over there, let you pack it them. Yeah, that's the, that's the one thing. That's why I think I think them going them going cause a big problem, and them, it I think it's going to be two all, and them go extra time, and I think man, you winning extra time. Wouldn't see that. Maxas is back. Okay. Oh, Maguire is back too. Well, Maguire, but Maguire never gone. In play last week. <laughs> no, but my my gun my gun shoot from season start, you know. I don't know. I don't even know if I be a blank on a bus. We say hot chili just for fun. No nah, man, it can be more than for fun, man. Them can't win the game, brother. Oh, fun thing. Them can't win. <clears throat> oh, okay, okay, okay. So I really wasn't even supposed to play last week. Well, there's no well, Johnny Evans is maybe back, so maybe him could have played. Oh, Duckland say I'm doubtful. Well, you have a next academy you can play side of Kambuala too. But I mean, I don't know how come ball and the injury, you know. How the man back now broke up. Brother, the, the beat where the man get last week, you know, from, from Solanke, you know. I the, one of the first time I ever see a brother do the limbo. I play football on a field. What a beating, brother. <laughs> Yo. Uh, Solanke. Slow mo. Cheese and peas. No, I think I think I know who did have it on them page. It was the club. I have to look at this thing, man. Bournemouth. AFC Bournemouth. It's a, like poetry in motion or something. The thing look mad. Oh no, it's not on this. Go find it, people. Hold on. This thing hilarious, you know. You must see the pandem gram. Why the team them don't just like put it on everything? If them post something, just put it, just link it to every something. I know that make more sense, man. Ah, I see it there. 
find it people so it's the last thing me I show no but alone United fans then yeah but say me don't have to look fit <laughs> I have to. This thing is hilarious, bro. And probably I'll strike my video for this, you know, but we can just chop it off if them strike it. It's at the end. For your viewing pleasure. Oh, and the CM Duffy with the tackle, Tavon Gray. Fashion, you know, even though the man sent him that way then you know, and still fumble over the ball to control it. Ah oh, boy. Anyhow, people, that's that's how saw me I sign off the show. Man United failure. Yeah, Van de Ven won. Lord God. That one did bad too. And many like Spurs neither, so that was great. Jason, regarding what you say about the racism incident, I always wonder why this happening now in football before it was Vinicius Jr. Well, it's happening in football because, you know, the, the fans, I mean, the stands are a reflection of society. And sadly, it's something that still exists in a society, brother. Some people can't look past your skin color, which is madness, car. if you boss a man head, at the same blood you ever see. I don't know why I use that analogy, but yeah, if someone bleeds, you're going to see the same thing. Ten Hag and Maguire is available. We have some problems. I had a small injury. He didn't train this week so far, but now he's back on the pitch. Expect me to be back for Sunday. Oh. Yeah, man, Maguire. Maguire played through the pain, brother. Slipped again. <clears throat> no, I did, I did, I did. The man swears he's going to push it down the wing and then change direction upon him and mash him up. We shall see Duklan. But yeah, I believe so. I'm a, I'm a predict for them for win. I pull for Coventry though. I hope my prediction wrong this one. All right, people. Respect all of those who did stick in for the whole Friday evening and give you a strength on the live stream. You don't know, people, if you're watching this on the watch back, be sure to leave your comments in the comment section. That's how we can continue the conversation there. And once again, people, as it comes forward to the end of the show, I don't really have anything that I normally say, but we're just going to say this tonight. Bless. Peace and love, people. Get some rest. Big match tomorrow. Come on, you gooners. Stop the bleeding. I beg on